Real Enigmas and Theories is back again with another video. Yo, we're going to get into this recap real quick. But before we do that, hit the like button on your way in. If you're not subscribed, go on ahead and sub real quick. Get ready to comment after the video is over. So this episode starts right where we left off with Jim on the phone with Leave it to Beaver. I mean, a voice claiming to be Thomas. Jim acts like it's a telemarketer until the voice mentions Ethan and Julie playing outside. Is it the boy in white? Is it Leave it to Beaver? Is it Thomas? I don't think so. Don't know. So Jim runs out to look for his kids. And when he finds them at the barn, he says, Get y'all little narrow asses to the house before you bring some of them ticks off them goats. Boyd sees this and he's like, Fuck going on, Jim, man. You tweaking on God, bruh. And then Jim says, Man, I'm talking to my kids. Worry about your son and that little rotten doodoo baby y'all got coming. Shit fucked up around here and you worry about me and mine. Man, take us to the credit. So after the credits, we cut to a scene with Henry's musty ass sleeping on the chair from good times. Scratching and surviving. And he's awakened by Tabitha tearing shit up in the kitchen. He goes in there to see what the hell she done broke now. And then she winds up cutting herself. And he tells her, You need to take your little ass in there and go to sleep. You in here breaking shit? She starts telling him about the boy in white. Then she starts hearing the noise like the bottle tree from Frumlin. And then she says, What's that sound? Sounds like somebody outside playing with a crack pipe. And Henry was like, Nah, yo, that's the bottles on the tree outside. But it do sound like that, though. Then we cut to a scene with Victor's long-ass boots walking with a map. Quick question. Why didn't he just draw the line to the right tree? I mean, I know you said the trees are moving, but obviously it, it ain't moved that much if the map still works. So why didn't you just, why he draw the line to two trees when the other tree was right there? Like, what the fuck is Victor on? Then we cut to a scene where Ellis is scared to help his dad catch the slow walker. And Donna pops up out of nowhere with her hands in her pockets. And Boyd realizes real quick that his son is pussy and he will never ask him to go into the trenches with him ever again. Dad. Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you later. Yep. I don't know why he just didn't ask Kenny. I mean, you know Kenny's ready to get active on the slow walkers. He's ready to do something. Then you got Randall. And then I would just go get Jim and Jade to help design a trap. Make it with very little risk factor and multiple contingencies because you know they're listening. I get all the vehicles and make some kind of obstacle course and light them slow walking motherfuckers up on fire. Anyway. We cut to a scene with Clara cooking up some steaks that Fatima can't even stomach the smell of. She makes a comment about the baby not being a meat eater. And then Fatima walks outside to the compost buffet and starts chowing down on some rotten produce. Then Tilly walks up on the live stream rotten radish mukbang and Fatima runs off because she know Tilly saw that shit. So then we go to a group led by Kenny, Jade and Christy heading to the cabin in the woods to get more food. Somebody needs to tell Kenny about Shorty right here, who ran down on his mom and straight took her shit, went in there like a home invasion. Somebody needs to tell Kenny that it was her right here. This is the one. Then we cut to a scene with Jim in the kitchen cooking some lunch for his kids and shit. And little badass Ethan starts talking crazy about his mom's dead body. Then Jim just snaps the fuck out on little Ethan real quick. Stop. Damn it. Stop. And then he and Julie walk off and shit and give Jim the fuck you card. Then the phone rings again and Jim hangs up on them like when the voter registration people call for you and shit. He hung banged on their ass real quick. Then we cut to a scene where Tabitha's Kanye jacket and Henry's musty t-shirt are standing by a bootleg bottle tree talking about how there's another one by the spot where Miranda and Henry used to sit and drink Thunderbird, drop acid and free base. Tabitha seems interested and makes Henry take her to the spot where Miranda used to meet up with Mary and Barry and Whitney Houston. 
So then Father Cotri shows up in the church while Boyd is trying to repurpose some old ass wood and starts talking shit to Boyd like when he came down to the box when Boyd was repurposing the wood after Frank died. Bunch of shit happens right there. A lot of clues. I'll save that for another video. Then Tilly shows up to Fatima's room telling her about licking eggshells and shit. Now here we go with the eggs. Here's another mention of the eggs. This time, it's a direct connection to fertility. Then we cut through a bunch of scenes that have tons of clues that I'll save for another video and go right to the part where Jade touches a rock and sees a vision. By the way, that was one of my predictions that Jade will see the vision after he touches the rock. The vision is of this Puritan looking guy with a railroad spike through his eye lodged into the tree, just like Kelly was. Then he grabs Jade. And Jade is so freaked out by this, he tries to leave. And then Christy gives Chase to stop him. But that's how she ends up getting caught in a bear trap, like a big fool. We cut to a boring ass conversation in the diner between Boyd, Bakta, and Ethan, with a whole bunch of clues for another video. So Jade, Kenny, and Dell are all trying to free Christy. And then a scene where Tilly is about to give Fatima a tarot card reading until a crow comes bursting through the damn window and dies right in front of Elgin while he was sleeping on the couch. Dude finally gets some sleep, and then a dusty-ass bird got to bust through the window and fly and die over there right by him. Meanwhile, Jade's breaking up one of them hoodoo statues so that he can use some of the metal to free Christie's leg. And it works, but at what cost? I mean, y'all fucking with hoodoo statues and shit. You don't know what the fuck's about to happen. Even Dale had that much sense. Then we see Randall having visions of the cicadas once again, and Boyd steps on the bus to ask Randall to switch spots with him for a night. Then we cut to Tabitha and Henry riding to the trap house bottle tree when Tabitha decides to look in Henry's glove box and finds a bracelet that looks just like the one she made. Tabitha starts making this ugly ass face while she was crying and then frantically questioning the reality of the situation. But then she tries to jump out the whip and ends up causing an accident that ends them up in the ambulance with the cop from the trailer. This episode ends with the ambulance arriving at a down tree in the road and Tabitha saying, no, no, no. But I thought that she was trying to get back to her family. So why wouldn't she be happy during this scene? I just don't get it. What the fuck's going on? But this was another great episode for the books of From for season three, for sure. I skipped a bunch of stuff and I'll be doing an esoteric breakdown real soon. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like, share this joint, and drop down in the comment section and let me know what you enjoyed the most. Subscribe if you're not already subbed and all that good YouTube shit, you know. Anyway, just a little something to think about while we wait on the next episode. That's all for my video today. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.